Hi, I'm Rishabh Hattarki and on behalf of my team, I'll be presenting our research, Real-Time Intrusion Detection System for IoT Networks. Let's start with the introduction. IoT devices are becoming pervasive. They're everywhere and the number is only increasing. Naturally, the adversaries want to exploit the vulnerabilities present in IoT. So our goal was to build an intrusion detection system for an IoT network. We needed to keep in mind the low computational power of IoT devices. We wanted to build a real-time attack detection system, which will identify this attack and notify the user on the front end. So before starting the project, we did a literature survey. And these are few of the research papers that we went through. And the most common pattern that we observed was the data set. Most of the people use the data set NSL KDD, ADFA LD, or KDD Cup 99. Now these are popular data sets. However, they are not implemented for IoT devices. Another thing that we noticed was most of them worked with offline data and they did not work with real-time data. And that's what we wanted to change in our research. We created our own data set using T-Shark. More on that later. So this is the system that we came up with. It consists of an IoT node which sends the distance data to the PHP script on an Apache server, which is then displayed with animations on the front end. Now, while all of this is happening, T-Shark monitors this network and gets traffic data into this CSV file. Now this Python script taps onto that CSV file and sends this data to the backend. In the backend, this data is passed to the machine learning model, Random Forest, and that decides whether this data is an attack or normal data. And if it is an attack, it will send a notification to the front end. This is a detailed view of our IoT node. It consists of the ultrasonic sensor, the Arduino Uno, and the node NCU. The Arduino Uno will use this ultrasonic sensor to get the distance data. It sends this data to the node MCU using serial communication, and node MCU uses its Wi-Fi module to send its data to the server. So this is the mock system that we built, on top of which our intrusion detection system will work. So now here we have the ultrasonic sensor. Now this is a burglar detection system. If I place my hand close to this ultrasonic sensor, it should detect a burglar. So if you get a rectangle over here, that means the burglar detection system is working correctly. So as you can see, once the hand was placed on top of the ultrasonic sensor, the burglar was spotted. Now what would happen if some hacker manages to disable this burglar alarm? That's right, even after moving the hand on top of the ultrasonic sensor, the burglar was not spotted this time. Now let's see what happens when the IDS is in place, when there's something malicious happening in the network and the burglar alarm is not working. As you can see in the top right corner, there are notifications about some intrusion happening. That is basically the IDS detecting some intrusion in the network. The algorithm that we used was Random Forest. It is a supervised machine learning algorithm. It is an ensemble of multiple weak learners with decision trees, and we chose this because it has generally a higher accuracy and is very flexible to use in real time. After the hyperparameter tuning, we found out that having 20 trees, random state as 3, and max depth as 3 worked best for our model, and the characteristic of impurity that we used was Gini. This is the data set that we use. As mentioned before, this is a custom data set and not any popular data set. This was made using the T-Shark script and it includes features like serial number, receiving time of frame, frame length, MAC address, IP address, etc. We performed several different attacks in order to build this data set. It included attacks like wrong setup, that is the IoT node was set up wrongly, distributed denial of service, that means a burglar system was somehow not able to give the right service. Data type probing. We were sending the wrong data type instead of the required one. Scan attack. Now this is the reconnaissance that is done before the actual attack that is to be done. Man in the middle attack, which is unknowingly intercepting traffic between two nodes. Now as you can see from this table, the frequency of the normal data and the frequency of man in the middle is differing vastly. And that is, it's very skewed towards the normal data. So that's the reason we did an oversampling which balanced the frequencies of all the different columns. This is a classification report of the training and testing data. 
the columns with the letter B, like precision B or recall B, are the data from before the oversampling, and the other columns are from after the oversampling. Now, what precision tells us is of all the different things that have been classified as attacks, how many of them are actually attacks? That means a low precision will tell you that it has a high false positive rate. What recall tells us is of all the actual attacks that have happened, how many of them have actually been detected? Now this is very important because if there is a low recall, it means that you've missed out on actual attacks. Even if you have a high false positive rate, that can be dealt with with security analysts reviewing whether it is an actual attack or not. But if you miss an actual attack itself, that becomes a problem. F1 score is the harmonic average of precision and recall and can be used to determine whether the model is good or not. Now as you can see from the table, oversampling has helped improve the performance metrics of wrong setup data type probing and man in the middle. Now this is a classification report from the real time testing. Now as can be seen from the table, the attacks 1, 4 and 5 perform very poorly and that is mostly because of the low support it received during the testing time. But overall, the other attacks like 0, 2 and 3 perform fairly well. More on this in the conclusion. Now with this, we have come to an end of our presentation. We developed a system for IoT networks. It works in real time and detects intrusions and also monitors traffic. However, it does have low precision and results in high false alarm rates. Now, future work can be done to reduce this false alarm rate and add more attacks, cover different protocols and increase the number of nodes. This will help to improve on the inclusivity and build a more robust model. Thank you for watching my presentation.